Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd ayla habitu fillah Continuing on in our study of the difference between advising and condemning by Imam Ibn Rajib <coughs> rahmatullah alayhi And in the last sitting I was mentioning a hadith the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an which was to in order to illustrate that even the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala an majma'in they exercise ijtihad and according to their understanding and that they didn't always make a correct verdict. And these are talking about issues of fiqh and mu'amalat and things like this. We're not talking about aqidah. So that letting us know that we are not to follow anyone if they take a weak opinion in something. Just because there is an alternative view does not mean it's correct. And if it was the alternative view of a great imam who held a opinion which was contrary to the evidence or built upon weak evidence, then of course you cannot accept it. But we maintain the honor and the status of that great imam of Ahlul Sunnah. And so in the case that I was mentioning, I was mentioning the hadith of Abi Huraira, it's the hadith an Nu'im al-Majmar, an Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anhu qal, inna ummati yad'una yawm al-qiyamati ghurran muhajjilain min athar al-wudu, fa man istata'a minkum an yutila gharratuhu fal yaf'al. Ruahu Bukhari wa Muslim wa fi left akhir ra'aytu Aba Huraira yatawadda'a fa ghazala wajhuhu wa yadayhi hatta kada yablagu munkabain thumma ghazala rijlayhi hatta rafa ila saqain thumma qala sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul inna ummati yad'una yawm al-qiyamati ghurran muhajirin min athar al-wudu fa man istata'a minkum min yutila gharratuhu wa tahjiluhu fil yaf'al uh, in this hadith, the hadith of uh, Nu'im al-Mujmar uh, on Abi Urayrata radiallahu ta'ala an, that uh, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that verily my nation will be raised on the day of judgment in accordance with their traces of wudu. Uh, and the gharran is, has to do uh, this is talking about the light of the face. And uh, so the traces of light on the face from their, uh, from having made wudu in the dunya, preparing for prayer. And there's immense benefit, and we don't want to get off track uh, on the purpose of mentioning this hadith. But, and whoever is, is able to increase this uh, light, then they should do so. So the issue Arise, so Abu Huraira, uh, one in, in another narration, uh, the narrator he said, I, I saw Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu making wudu and he washed his face and his hands until he reached his uh, to till he reached his shoulders. Then he washed his uh, his 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 original his, his 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 feet, what refers to his feet until he reached his calves. So that shows us, this was from the ijtihad of Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And then, and then uh, Abu Huraira said, when the narrator who saw this from Abu Huraira, then he said, I heard the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and then he mentioned that same hadith. Letting us know this was from the understanding in the ijtihad of Abu Huraira, and it was said, and as Imam, uh, as Sheikh uh, Ali Bassam, rahmatullah alayhi, mentions in his explanation, that this was in the case uh, that Abu Huraira <coughs> used to do this, radiallahu ta'ala, and when he was, you know, alone, away from people, so that way the people wouldn't think it was something strange. Not meaning Abu Huraira was doing a bid'ah or doing something which he thought was contrary, but he thought that the people, it wasn't known to the people. And this is how he understood this hadith, and from his ijtihad, he was trying to increase those areas of wudu so that Yom al Qiyamah he would be raised with increased light. And this shows us what, ahabatifillah, the point of mentioning this hadith 
is to illustrate for us that we can't follow every ijtihad of anyone, that, uh, that we all can uh, make mistakes and be refuted, and that we don't follow anyone in their mistakes, even if they were from the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiyallahu ta'ala mijma'een, in an ij issue of ijtihad, that obviously one opinion, not all opinions, are equally uh, to be judged and equally correct. Imam, going back to the text, Imam Ibn Rajab said, not one of the people of knowledge abandoning doing this clarification, meaning clarifying the mistakes of people, nor would he claim in his refutation to disparage, dispraise, or defame the individual who's saying he was refuting, unless the author he was refuting was from those whose speech consisted of wickedness and who displayed vile manners when expressing himself. So showing us uh, that there's a proper manners and adab when criticizing uh, individuals, when criticizing even Ahl Bid'ah, the Ahl Sunnah is just. And this is a characteristic, Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned this in Aqidah al Wasatiyah. And when he, when he said that Ahl uh, Sunnah arham al nas bi bin nas wa arham al nas bi khalqo kama qal, that Ahl Sunnah, that they're the most merciful or the most gentle of the people to people. And they are the most gentle to the creation. Letting us know that Ahl Sunnah is just. They're not transgressing bounds. They don't lie against people in order to make their case. They don't uh, have to give people nicknames and curse them and call people Goldie and call, call people this or call people uh, this and, and claim that they watch pornography or whatever the case may be. They don't lie and stretch the tr truth. Instead, they make their case based on Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and stick with the evidences and the evidences of what the individual said. So, for example, if we speak about Yasser Qadi, if we speak about Nu'man, if we speak about whoever, anyone, that it has to be based on knowledge. It can't be based on our desires because we dislike the person or we're jealous of the person or we're this, or we don't like their race, or we don't like their nationality, we don't like their hairstyle. Nah. But rather, it's based on what they said that goes against Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the Madhab Madhab or Madhaj of Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah. So that's how we have to stick with those things. And it's very important for us to understand this. And I'm going to bring out some beautiful statements from uh, Sheikh Muhammad Ali Imam or in his book, fantastic book, uh, referred to, uh, the title is called Ibana, Al-Ibana. And it's talking about how Ahl Sunnah should deal with the mistakes of Ahl Sunnah, how they should be, uh, you know, that there's a difference, with it, that you maintain, you have gentleness and you have justice with your brothers and sisters from Ahl Sunnah because they're on the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah. They're on the minhaj of Ahl Haq versus Ahl Bid'ah and those people who deviate in the religion and whose foundation is not from the usul of Ahl Sunnah. Maybe they, they uh, not, not even grave worship, but they dance around graves or they do uh, you know, whatever that they do that doesn't take them out of the fold of Islam necessarily, but they are from Ahl Bid'ah. They're usul. They believe that it's permissible to to uh, seek assistance from the dead in one form or another and that the dead is not really, uh, that the essence of the human being is what you're dealing with and you're not dealing, you know, whatever their ta'wil is. They could be Ashari, they could be Sufi, they could be whatever. So their usul is not from Ahl Sunnah, especially with regards to Al-Asma'i wa Sifat, especially uh, the Asha'ira. So you deal with an Ashari different then you would deal with someone from Ahl Sunnah as far as maintaining their respect and their, their status. So an Imam from Ahl Sunnah or a Sheikh from Ahl Sunnah or a Talib al Ilm from Ahl Sunnah or even someone of the general Muslims from Ahl Sunnah, you're going to maintain their, uh, their status that this is a great Imam, but however, his statement here is not supported by the evidence. You're going to refute them with respect. Whereas the, the person from Ahl Bid'ah they don't have that luxury of maintaining necessary the respect. Not meaning that you're unjust with them. Not meaning that you're lying against them. Not meaning that you curse them and you give them foul nicknames. No. But that they don't have the same uh, respect because they have lost their respect when they went against the asul of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a. Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah said in his book Al Jawab uh, Al Jawab al Sahih, Liman Bedala Deen al Masih. He said, 
ولما كان اتباع الانبياء هم اهل العلم والعدل كان كلام اهل الاسلام والسنه مع الكفار واهل البدع بالعلم وعدل لا بالظن ظن وما تهوى الانفس ولهذا قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم القضاء ثلاثه قاضيان في النار وقاد في في الجنه رجلا علم الحق وقضى به فهو في الجنه ورجل علم الحق وقضى بخلافه فهو في النار ورجل قضى للناس على الجهل وهو في النار ورواه ابو داود وغيره فاذا كان من من يقضي بين الناس في اموال والدماء واعراض إذا لم يكون عالما عادلا كان في النار فكان بما فكيف بمن يحكم في الملل وأديان وأصول الإيمان والمعارف الإلهية والمعالم الكلية بلا علم ولا عدل كهال أهل البدع والأهواء شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية said and this is very imperative for us to understand this is very uh, beneficial he said uh, and since the situation of those people who followed the NBA, the prophets, uh, and though they are the people of knowledge and justice, then the people of Islam and the Sunnah with regards to the disbelievers and Ahl al-Bid'ah, the people of desires, was with, with knowledge, based on knowledge, and justice, meaning that Ahl Sunnah deals with the people of Ahl Bid'ah and the, the non-Muslims, the disbelievers who disbelieve in Allah and His Messenger وسلم, with justice and knowledge, not based on desires and cursing and, and so forth. And, and he said, La bidhan, not with uh, uh, speculation or with their desires. And in regards to this, the Messenger وسلم, said, that there are the, the judges of three, and two of them are in the fire, and one of them is in paradise. He said, a, a, a man who understands the truth, and he judges by it, then he is in Jannah. This one will be in Jannah. And a man who knows the truth, 